Today we are famous and today we are very proud of the Shaolin warrior monks. Why are we always keeping up that word warrior monks? Because they are expressing something. They are expressing something which when you can feel it, you feel it's something very special to have nowadays. To not give up when the times are getting hard. It's not just the Shaolin who are, who are living this type of spirit, but they also possess it. Because this is what makes the difference between someone that we call a warrior and maybe another person, somebody that we call who succeeds and somebody you maybe call today a loser. The difference is both are going to come to the point where they are facing the challenge and when they are maybe facing also their defeat for the first time. The only difference is that the warrior keeps going. Yeah. And somebody who does not have enough courage, who does not have enough discipline, who does not have willpower, maybe he just does not have the power anymore to keep on going and going and going after he failed so many times. But because of these failures, because there is something inside of you which, which feels that you don't want to fail the fourth and fifth and sixth time anymore, because of this, something else inside of you starts to become very, very strong. We can try in the beginning to remove ourselves a little bit from the wording because I think everybody who hears the word warrior, he will already have something in the mind what he is considering a warrior to be. We can take any successful person nowadays. I don't think that this person reached his success or reached his position where he is at the moment without having some guiding principles in his lifetime and one of them certainly is structure. I don't think he reached that point by just doing what he wants during the day. Maybe right now he's in the position that he can do what he wants but how he got there is not by doing what he wanted. He put himself a structure, he put himself a guideline and no matter how he felt during that day, this was the code, this was the mission and this is what he kept. If you feel tired or not, yeah? if you are in the mood to do it or not, you had your structure and you kept it. Don't lose sight don't lose sight. Be open of what the future brings. Yeah? On the one side, it's also very important to not have too much fixed goals in, in your own life. So that means don't make too concrete pictures in the mind of how the future should look like. But what all of life's purpose, all of the 24 hours day you do have, is that you can shape the direction of where those goals are going to, to appear. So it is the direction in a way that we are shaping. It starts really with the simple, simple things. Even so that we are in the 21st century and the possibilities of doing and exploring this world are so huge, it doesn't mean that you should freely do what you want at all times. This is not the way of how in the monastery, in the Shaolin temple, we are regarding it as a healthy way of growing. To discover, to explore, to make something from your journey means you need to walk. We need to be active. But now the question is, when you look at your 24-hour day, how much of this 24-hour day 
is it active and how much of it is it like waiting, sitting and passively observing. Yes, so my name is Shi Hang Yi. I am currently the headmaster here from the Shaolin Temple Europe. Father, he wanted me to start practicing with the age of four, to just join a Shaolin school nearby here in Kaiserslautern, Germany, where I just start my practice. I stayed with whatever I started with and never really gave up on falling into different uh, directions. There came some hard times where I really wanted to give up and didn't follow up anymore on the martial arts side. But my father, in that sense, he never gave me a choice to even consider of quitting something that uh, I started so early in age. In the very beginning, also for me, I have to say that every time I watched the Shaolin movies and every time something about Shaolin came onto my mind, in the first place, I was always limiting it in a way to the physical aspects and meaning to the physical abilities of these people, of these persons who were practicing the Shaolin arts. But now, after 34 years, uh, it's, how can I say, it is a very, very important aspect, the physical training. But there will come the time when you simply have to realize that it's impossible to keep up this physicality on the long run. No matter how much performance you can deliver at this very moment. But just due to the simple facts of we are getting old, yeah, we are having more restrictions inside our body, it's impossible to keep up that performance on the long term. So therefore, it becomes very, very relevant that there are other aspects about the human, about yourself, which is more sustainable and that you can keep up for a much, much longer time. I became better because I compared myself with others. I saw how others were doing their performance. I saw how skillful other people were. And that's why I looked up to them in the beginning and tried to ask myself, okay, they can do it. How can I try and get to that point as well? And so that means competition and that competitive mind in the very beginning was an important aspect of, how do I say, of challenging yourself and of also trying to get the best version out of you. But meanwhile, things just have shifted a little bit. And the purpose right now, why I'm training, why I'm still pushing myself, now it has shifted that I don't have the competitive mind in comparison to somebody else. But now it's really to myself only. And that means that it's endless in a way. It becomes endless, this path of how much you can grow. Because you simply just take yourself as that one person that you try to improve. And at the same time, because now it's yourself that you are taking as this idol and as the best version comparison, this also means you have a much deeper insight into the person that you're comparing yourself with. Because before you saw the physical abilities and you saw the skills of another person, but sometimes you didn't see their character. But now, because it is yourself that you are facing with, now you can dive much deeper into what you are actually made out of. humans like stability, yeah? to be stable, to be balanced. That means, also now talking from the martial arts, when you start your training, no matter what type of system it is, the first things you normally learn in the martial arts is the proper way of standing, which means the proper way of aligning your body 
on the earth. Because we say, if you cannot stand firmly, no matter what type of techniques and applications you're trying to uh, do afterwards, they can only be as good as your foundation is. And this foundation means for us stability of the body, stability of the legs. But now trying to translate this into the modern way of living a life. I mean, it's, it's very, very similar. You can start off easily nowadays to become, try and become famous very quickly, try to build up a very high level lifestyle. But the question ultimately is, all these things, one day they will reach their peak and they will vanish again. And then the question remains, what is the foundation that is going to hold you up? Because sometimes living a fast way up also means it's going to be a fast way down. That's why very often we say, just look outside the tree. It does not happen in the whole universe that you are planting this tree on one day and one week after you have that, uh, that huge tree standing in front of you. It's just not happening in this world. When it comes to such a word like a balance, it's not that you know from the mind that you do something about it. It is because you can feel that something is, that something needs to be done. It's like, if you try one day maybe when you have a child and try to explain to him how to ride the bicycle, you can tell him in order to ride the bicycle, you need to learn to be perfectly in balance. So the left side of your body and the right side, there must be 50-50 of weight distribution. Front side, back side, 50-50. It doesn't matter how long we are going to explain it to the child. You know that the child understood what balance is. In the moment where he can ride the bicycle. Because then you know he just discovered something. Now he has it. So. And the same is like now for us. So that means now it's not the bicycle that we are riding. Now it is your life. It is your life. It is the things that right now are happening in your life. It is the amount of how many bad messages, let's say, are you receiving at the moment? Yeah? How is your sleep at the moment? How is your appetite at the moment? How is your general mood at the moment? All of this right now, together, this is where you start to get a feeling for it. You feel this is my life. This is how my life feels at the moment. And when you now feel that something is not correct there, then you balance it out. And the easy way to just balance out, this is what we describe as there is an observation part and there's an active part. For many, many people, I think to start with those two levels of balancing would already be enough. That simply means maybe you are too active in some parts and maybe you're too passive in other parts. No matter in what you are investing it, every one of us has 24 hours that we can work with. Any other skill that you can develop in this world, any skill must be nourished over and over again. And this is why there is the saying, for example, the real skill, the Kung Fu, what we call Kung Fu, yeah, it's a skill attained by investing a lot of effort. And the only way in order to express this is by repetitive, repetitive structure, repetitive movements. And therefore is the saying, perfection comes from repetition.
because this is also why somebody becomes so good in in filming making very nice video shots very nice footage why how come i'm sure he very often had his camera in his hands somebody who is practicing or is uh, in the martial art fields his lifetime his 24 hour day must be filled with martial art way of life so in order to know in what is a person good in you just need to look at the 24 hour day at the seven days a week at every month and at the last two three years and then you can very much tell already what type of skills a person for example uh, can develop or has developed If something appears in your in your lifetime that you like you see something that you like or you hear something that you like so something comes there into your lifetime and you like it then we say don't pull if something appears in your lifetime that you don't like that means that you would normally reject there we say don't push so I like it that's why I want to keep it as good as I can and I want to bring it even closer to me. Then what is going to happen is one day when the time comes, whatever you try to pull towards you, it's simply going to move even away from you. At the same time, something comes and you rejected it right from the beginning. It's just a question of time until whatever you push away from you starts to move very close to you. You just need to watch around you from the moment that we are born. From the moment that we are born, your amount of inhalation and exhalation is exactly 50-50. The amount of days and the amount of nights until right now it's 50 50. nothing stays the way how it is success never stays success because success is based upon failure a healthy person never will stay only healthy he is healthy because sickness exists. A rich man never stays rich forever. He's only rich right now because poorness also exists. Maybe one day we're gonna ask ourselves, there must be another way of handling and walking through this lifetime without always being caught inside these up and downs of life yes and this is how i would at the moment express what that whole expression and idea is about harmony about balance about stability about unity no matter if you are going to be rich in this lifetime, you don't lose yourself. There is that one person in this lifetime. That person cannot be raised more than he is and he cannot be lower more than he is because he has always been stable. No matter how many compliments you give him, he will always remain stable. He won't raise up. No matter how much you insult him, you cannot insult him because you cannot get him down because he is always remaining in the stable state. He's unshakable. It's always worthwhile to strive for something that you regard as important for your life. Something that you have attained, you are going to lose. Attainment is there because you can lose it. 
but attainment also means it's not you you are the one who can attain things that's why don't identify yourself with the attainment don't identify yourself as rich you can you can be rich but you are not richness because richness will leave you one day but if i can be rich i can be rich but if this richness one day leaves well then it left but i am still me that's the difference I can be a successful person but I am not success because if you are success you going to lose it yeah and so this is the it's just a small mental switch i would say that makes the difference how do you want to express yourself in this world when you set yourself a mission to have the vitality to have the power to have the mindset to have the determination yeah to have the will power just as we know them from the shaolin warrior monks today and it's not just in our tradition where i am coming from right now these were the idols that i grew up with but maybe if you would talk to another person which maybe has his descendants coming from Japan maybe he would take the japanese samurai as an example of the warrior codex maybe you go to the united states i don't know maybe over there you can take the navy seals as a elite special force which is also expressing a very powerful mindset in many different ways so different cultural traditions had different idols different type of powerful spirits that you can look up to and from where i come from these were the warrior monks hardship is never easy when it comes to the pure practice of the martial arts so the kung fu training there is an expression which is sometimes called if you make this education to a shaolin master to a kung fu master you are normally walking through the valley of pain yeah this is how it's expressed because it involves a lot a lot of physical conditioning a lot of physical challenges that you need to cross that means it happens in the stretching it happens when you are just building up your stamina it happens when your body starts to grow it happens in every single aspect that you need to challenge your body and you need to challenge especially the mind so this is the one side of it but by far more difficult is really to decide how committed are you to really do something about your life 